Oh boy, I have to carry a dictionary to be following this man, you know. <laughs> Thank you so much. Apostle, so so grateful and so honored to have a platform from where we can speak the word God has given us. And honestly, one reason why I don't go out much is that sometimes um, it's not always easy to find a platform from where you can speak certain things, you know. So I'm grateful to you as well. Um, thank you and Mama for your hospitality. Spoke to my wife this afternoon. So we're expecting you in Lagos anytime from now. We were so glad to host both of you. I'm talking about pathways. You, you are also a designer of the pathways of God. You, you know what they said about David? They said, the elders came and said, David, when you were, when Saul was king, you were the one who was designing the pathways of the church. So in every season, God also looks for a designer of his pathway. And that's your call as well in this season. So thank you for being obedient to the call. Pastor James, um, I'll be so glad to, to be welcomed in, in Manchester if you would have me, if you would graciously receive me. <laughs> and I want to thank the ministers also. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you so much for also receiving the word God gave, gave us this morning for, for the ministers. You know, they said a man sends his wife away at some point and they asked why. He said, you know what Jesus said. That Jesus said, narrow is the waist. Ah, that his wife was putting on weight. And then Jesus, this is what Jesus said. They said, Jesus didn't say that. He said, narrow is the way. You don't know your Bible again. See, what happens is sometimes we narrow is the way but we sort of widen it we widen it and God wants us to go back to keeping it as narrow as he himself has defined it to be you know one of the things John said in 1st John he said that every spirit that confesses that Jesus is, is Lord and that's the true test. I was talking about it this morning. The true test of prophecy. What is your message? Confessing. Is your message bringing out Jesus in the people? Because God's goal is not our happiness. God's goal is that we be conformed to the image of Christ. And so everybody, oh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. How was service? I'm blessed. How was service? Mm. He asked someone, how was service? He said, mm, it was good. <laughs> so what did they talk about? I don't know. Whatever it was. Mm. Everybody's happy. When they ask God, God says, everybody's happy except me. Everybody's blessed except me. Maybe one day we're walking out and we meet God. And God said, where are you coming from? And we say, Lord, we're coming from a service. He said, what's that? That's God asking. I will say, Lord, are you backsliding a service for you? <laughs> and you say, I wasn't even there. I don't know what you people were doing there. <laughs> so our, our message must confess that Christ has come in the people. We must be seen preaching that message of Christ coming in the people. Well, this evening. This evening, I, I think we should continue from where we left over a little, just a little, just a little. Hey, GEC, thanks for that. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. So uh, we'll, we'll do a little bit of that worship and then we would get into the word. And the message I want to preach tonight, I, I've had a bit of a rethink. I, mean, I met a professor this, this afternoon and Prof, thank you for the insights you gave us today. It's sort of made me feel okay one or two things I need to talk about tonight so in the, mor in the morning we're talking about we're speaking from 1 Corinthians 14 it says I will pray 
in the spirit, I will pray in my understanding. So we looked at the benefits of prayer. Everyone knows prayer brings power. Prayer brings utterance. Prayer connects you with God. Prayer gives you a sense of you. Prayer puts you in the framework to preach prayer. Prayer is just a tool to move the hand of God. Prayer is a tool to fight the enemy. And even if God hasn't answered the prayer, the fact that you're connected in prayer makes you connected to the source of life. It's like, how do you want, how does an air conditioner cool or a fan rotate or a, a heater boil water? It's when it's connected to a power source. So prayer is like connecting to a source. It makes you a more efficient human being. Now, these are, there's so many benefits of prayer. Opens up the hearing. You hear better. In any case, when then we move from praying in our understanding with all these benefits we know to praying in tongues, we elevate, we move into a higher dimension of those same benefits we got from praying in our understanding. So when we pray in tongues, we pray the mind of God. When we pray in tongues, we defy ourselves. We thank God. It says, Verily thou givest thanks well. But prayer brings a refreshing. It says, This is the rest. This is the refreshing. So there's so many benefits of prayer which are heightened as we begin to bring our utterance in tongues. Then I was talking about worship as well. The same way we have so many benefits when we worship God. We enter his gates with thanksgiving. We enter his courts with praise. You know, so thanksgiving and praise brings us into the presence of God. We, we war a good warfare out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. God ordains strength. And Jesus said that ordained strength is perfected praise. He says when we praise, it's ordained strength from God. It says, let the high praises of God be in our mouth, a two-edged sword in our hands to wreak vengeance on the enemy. So prayer is powerful. Praying in the spirit in tongues takes us to a higher dimension. The same way singing is just so powerful. And then when we move it to singing, um, please give us that scripture in First Corinthians. That we pray. It says, what is the conclusion? I'm going to do the two for each one. So I'm going to pray in tongues and I'm going to pray in my understanding. And so when we pray, it's good to combine both. Sometimes people get confused about praying in tongues and praying in the Spirit. Those are technical issues. Sometimes we say praying in the Spirit. It's good. You can pray in your understanding and not be in the Spirit. But ideally... That's why I said you should pray, that you should, that you can pray. Because when you pray, the longer you pray, the more you're in the spirit. So your utterances, your thinking, your activities are spirit-led. Now, we can sing in our understanding, and we can sing in the spirit. And all those benefits we see. When we sing in our understanding, are also taken to a new dimension as we begin to sing in the spirit. I will declare you are the only God, the only God, the only God. I will declare. You are the only God, the only God I know. Jesus, Jesus, 
singing that song. Where's the pastor who prayed for healing? Thank you for your words. Thank you so much. I really concur. I really agree with those words. Mental health issues. The prostate issues. I cannot the third one. Two months. I just sense the same things you're talking about. And so the people who have, the men or the people with prostate problems should go back and do a test. I just I had a fish on, on Sunday. In that vision I saw people had gone to a doctor and the doctor had sent them to to an investigation to a diagnostic center. And then as all the results came back, sodium wrong, PSA bad, prof all the various parameters. But then someone came and was changing those figures to below normal, just bringing them below normal. And then I'm sure his, one of our friends then called me on the day after and said, I went and did a test. My results have come back to near normal. I said, keep trusting God. And so I believe, I believe for that again today. Give me a warfare sound. Let's, let's look for a song. Let's. And, and what makes this house very powerful, I was explaining in the morning, is that's why I want to preach a different message tonight. The message I want to preach tonight, it's, it's a message I preached all the time. But someone said, oh, there's one message you preach everywhere you go. I said, yes. I, that's why I'm not a conference speaker. That when I preach that message, by the grace of God, he institutes government in that house. And that's the message I want to bring tonight. But let's, let me explain this singing thing. And so, we can work with singing in our understanding. Then to move it to the next level, Paul said, I will sing in the Spirit. And there are dimensions of singing in the Spirit. And this church that learns all of these things honestly it 
doesn't need the man of God to be doing everything. Men of God pray for car. Men of God pray for handbag. Men of God pray in the hospital. Ah, come on. That's pastoral abuse. Bible says, then, is there any sick? Send for the elders. But sometimes the man of God wants to be the only one. It's an old move. Old wine. I mean, look at a house of little men. So there's like maybe 2,000 of us here, 3,000. That's 3,000 churches in the city. That's 3,000 kings. So when we begin to sing in the spirit, there are dimensions. The first was what I explained in the morning, which, you see, I call it the monochord or the monotonal. And everyone needs to learn that monochord. It is just singing in the spirit that keeps you within one chord. Now, some people can pray. When we say sing, they are still praying and deprive us of the benefits of united voices in worship. Because they're, they're, it's, there's a difference. Okay. So in the monochord, it's just one chord. You guys do it so well in the UK. Now some people start warring inside it. Yeah, bah, bah, bah. When, when you come into a meeting, what you should do is check the mood, follow the leader. Exactly, and then it will be symbols we'll be using. Yeah, you guys, you guys, I'm, I'm with professionals here. You guys, sit straight, sit now. Don't mind me sitting now. Sit down. Let's do it. You can push it up. Do it, do it, do it. Microphone. Exactly. Add some, add some melody. Come on, let's go. Don't pray, don't pray, sing. Don't pray. Pull your words in. Oh, 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 Everyone, let's go. All over the world, there are those churches that are Moses pastoral, begging, blessing churches. And honestly, people have needs. And we need to meet the needs of the people. Need for healing, for marriage for breakthroughs, for deliverance and there must be a pastoral dimension meeting the needs of the people and sometimes when we use the word apostle, apostle and because apostles carry a very strong grace, sometimes people feel there isn't a pastoral dimension there is, but it's not the mushy, mushy kind of pastor, so it's like sometimes it's tough love, we want you to be strong we want you to get up and go but there is the pastoral grace So, we want you, we want needs met. But do you know that God has needs? And sometimes, He's saying, Who would meet my needs? 
So the Philistines are attacking Israel. No, change it, change it. Don't stay on it. Don't lock me into that, please. So the Philistines are attacking. Goliath is cursing, cursing by his gods. The Israelites are afraid. Saul is trembling, even though his so high head and shoulders are afraid. Eliab is in the army, no strength. Shammah, his brother, is in the army, no strength, he's afraid. Abinadab is in the army. Everybody's saying, what kind of trouble is this? Oh God, help us. And God himself is praying. They're asking, where are you, God? Where are you, oh God? And God is saying, oh, where's David? Where's David? He has a need for David. He has a need to establish the kingdom. Do we have a need in this? Does God have a need in this country? Does God have a need in this parts? And so there is a church that meets the needs of people. And there is a church that meets the needs of God. So it's not always, oh God, what can you do for me? It's like, God, what can I do for you? So we've raised churches. The whole night's vigil is paganism. Because that's what Jesus said. He said, your father knows the things you have need of. Stop. He says, you say, what shall we eat? What shall we wear? What shall we drink? What shall we put on? Give me this breakthrough. Give me that breakthrough. Legitimate needs. But Jesus said, your father knows those things. He says, these are the things, the pagans, these are the things the unbelievers are concerned with every day. So there is, a, there is a place to meet the needs. But then there is a place to meet the needs of God. He needs an atmosphere of worship. He needs incense rising up to him. He needs people who can live right for him. He needs people who can take territory. He needs people who can pray. He needs apostles who can move. He needs people who can teach the word. story I tell of the lady. She wasn't singing that day. They said, ah, Madam, Madam, you're not singing. I said, I don't like that song. Ah, they said, we're not singing for you. We're worshipping God. Oh, it's about you. So once they say, so the song that makes you up, today he start jumping. If he does, who are, is it for you? Ah, you are, okay, you are God. You go and create another world. Now let's see. There's an atmosphere of the kingdom that just changes the environment. So that's the first one. Do you see the monochord? And then if you sustain the monochord long enough, it takes you into the soaking dimension. And the soaking dimension creates that atmosphere for personal devotion, for personal worship. And some people can take that soaking sound and move it into a chant. No, before the chant, move it into a praying sound so that sometimes can be praying in the spirit, singing, we can be singing. And that singing enables people to pray. So remember, there's the monochord, that's one. Then there's the soaking that allows personal devotion, allows prayer, it allows corporate prayer. So there's some songs we can sing. Like, who's the man that sings, give me oil? Is that Theophilus who sings that song? Give me oil in my mouth. Keep me back. Do you know, just singing that song, I just feel like praying. Then when I move it in the spirit, I'm soaking with it. People now start praying. I normally use a song. I normally use songs. I start with my understanding, move it into the spirit. So I take a, a song that Nathaniel Bassett taught me years ago. Uh, 
um, what's that song? Jesus. Da, 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 da. Jesus. Don't tell me that. Ask them to give you, give you. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Tell them. What do you, what do you want me to do to, to get another microphone? <laughs> Touch me with your hand. Gee. Oh, man of God. Oh, man of God. Can I get a microphone? Hands. Jesus. Jesus. Give, give him, give him sound. Let him hear me. Touch me with your hand. Do you know, what, what key? When people ask me what key do I sing? I just say, listen, anyone I feel like. Today I'm using S. Touch me using with R. your I can hand. Use Jesus. Jesus. Touch me Touch with me your hands. hands. Savior. Touch, Touch me, me with your hands. Jesus. Touch, Touch me, me with your hands. Do not let me go. Savior. Do not let me go. Same way, way I can. Touch, Touch me, me with your hands. Hand. Let, let, let them pray. Kalima. Now I'm so sing gently. So keep, it, keep, keep it on soaking. Keep it on soaking. In the name of Then ask God to touch you. So the one leading now moves the people into prayer. Who's that? Who's that? Do you see, man? You, you are just too hot. Who's that? Where did you learn this thing from? <laughs> so, so we're still on that soaking dimension. So we've moved from the monochord to the soaking. And soaking can be for personal devotion, it can be for prayer, corporate prayer. And because you have to stop the song and sing in the spirit to allow for time for people to then pray long enough. And then you can always go back to fuel it with that song. And then the third dimension is then, it's called the singular chant. So we're moving from monochord to soaking and the various dimensions of soaking and now we move into a singular chant the singular chant different people have different sounds everyone has their own chant everybody has a chant everybody has a song sometimes when they try to change you find they're unable to it's a gift and there's a current chant now that has a jewish sound to it but there's there are others there's the mexican there's the chinese so sometimes we lock ourselves into everyone thinks that the chant is only has to be sound like it only has to sound jewish that's just a current dimension of the chanting there are other streams of chanting of the singular chant so everyone in the choir for instance if you take the first row back up each of them should have their own singular chant do you guys do you guys understand what i'm saying do you guys understand what I'm saying here? This singular chance. Any of you have a chance? Sister, let's go. Let's hear your chance. You know, we, we, heard, we, heard, we heard you, you see. Let me hear yours. Ah. <laughs> oh, this girl is anointed, man. <laughs> Give us the singular chance. Do you understand a singular chant? Now that's a current sound, but there are other dimensions. GC, let's hear yours. <laughs> you are the man. Ah, 
Come Come give her a girl so flow. Come on, let's okay. move. Ah, singular ah, chanting. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so much, man. Oh, oh, if we stay here long enough, yeah, yeah, angels, yeah, yeah, yeah. angels, 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 by, yeah. angels, angels, oh, angels. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shut up. Wait, 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 wait. Man, you are, you are, you are flying. Hey, you are flying. Where are you going? We are not ready for you. We are not, we are just taking off. We are going like Concord. Slow down. So Jesus, so your singular chant is so powerful. Now, with the congregation then, because yours is a singular specific chant, they can follow in their own way. So it's okay. So you lead and we just follow. So depending on who's chanting in that singular chant, as I said, the members of the choir, each person should have their own individual dimension. I think we're going to come back to you. But we have so much to do. If you keep us here, we end up flying in a different direction. So we've done the monochord, we've done the soak, this is a singular chant. The next is the corporate rhythmic progressive chant. It journeys, it's corporate, and everyone has to follow that rhythm. And it's spontaneous, and it shifts depending on where the leader is navigating it into. I can use it ultimately for war, but before war, I can use it to worship. I can use it to, I can just do, it's like it becomes a tool for spiritual navigation. Navigating my way through the realm of the spirit. Giving angels assignments. Declaring the centrality of God. Bringing God's presence down. Pushing back, expanding. Shana Marina Mandi, Sama Kudaba Simbandi, Sunday Mambando, Ilema Sima Kura Batele, Elemo Sumba, Ekelebo Surata Ma, Selemo Sumba. So what now we rehearse that song? I don't want warfare yet. You're moving us into warfare. But it's okay. Jesus, if I ask you to do that, you're going to just blow the place apart. But because I have a message to teach, you understand the rhythmic. It's progressive. It can change. The tempo can change. It can become adagio. It can become staccato. You can stop. You can start. And you can allow the members of your choir to chant the rhythmic, corporate, progressive, because it's progressive. It's just not like monochord. It's no longer like soaking. And it's no longer one person's singular chant. It's, it's, it flows. You want to try? Because you're going there. <laughs> Shine. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Give him that first, give him that first. Song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, hold on. You, know, you know, honestly, you, you're just so powerful. You can start or they can start. Sometimes you start, they join you. Other times they start. I prefer for them to just start anything and I'll join. Sometimes I start. What do you prefer, Jesus? They're just a pro. Let's go. That's a good one. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah.
so progressive. My God, my God, my God. My God, my Father. Okay. Harmonize. Let me go. Then you harmonize with me. So the last in that journey is warfare. It is warfare. You know, there the are different dimensions of, of, of warfare. There's, there's, there's personal warfare. We are fighting flesh. You know, that's that. Then there's low-level warfare. We are fighting those demons that make people spit. Turn around. Get out. Come out. Come out. Yeah. And then there's middle-level warfare that's dealing with regional issues. Then there's territorial warfare that's dealing with things to do with Islam, things to do with genocide, things to do with, you know, political machinations out there. And then there's cosmic level. And that one, we don't get involved. Like when we are fighting about the body of Moses, it's like, Lord, you're your own in this one. So let's do the, let's do the map. That's the one I love to do. That's the one that's just so powerful. That's the one that just clears the atmosphere. So sometimes I, I would use a song. Hey, GC, let's stay with these guys on this side. Let's come. Please come. Let's stay with the choir. Please join me with the choir. Yes, come along. Come along. You guys sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. We want to extend the influence of the kingdom in this area. We want to pray over apostles, new assignment. There's something is pushing back in the realm of the spirit. So let's give it the platform to move. Break. Let's go. Break, break, break. Break, break, break. Break down the walls of captivity. Hey. Break. Break, break, break. Oh. Where break, the break, break, break. Where are the soldiers? Break down the walls of captivity. Break, break, break. Break, break, break. Break, break, break. down the walls of captivity. Break, break, break. Break, break, break. Break down the wall of 
into the space. Play, play, play. Now make it a chance. Let's move it into a chance. Ah, yeah. I will sing in the understanding. Oh, Anointed fan. We were not just entertaining you, we people. I was, that was like a school of prophetic singing. Okay, Psalm 89. I'm not sure I should start this message really. I'm sweating, but it's okay. I'm a soldier I like the man. I like you guys from this part. You know, you guys are just strong. When I looked at you, you're not finding yourself. I returned the fan quietly to the, to the lady. Who... <laughs> Psalm 89, verse 11. I'll try and do an abridged version of my, this message, as I said, it's a message I, it's really my only message in a manner of speaking. It's a message of my calling. Psalm 89 verse, 89 verse 11. eighty nine, eight nine, eighty nine. 89. Man of God, your introduction took my time, so you have to you have to take that time back. <laughs> so they should start flashing me time now. They just count the one you were preaching that introduction. New King James, please. So I, I want you to participate with me in this short message just to deliver, as I said, the core message that God has given me. Let's read together. One, two, let's go. The heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. 
the world and all its fullness you have found. So let's make it interactive. So who owns the heavens? Who owns the earth? God. Who owns the world and its fullness? God. Sometimes, and part of the grace God has given me is to take, because I, I preach to street kids, I preach to commercial sex workers, but I preach the same message. So God gives me grace to take what the apostle is preaching and to simplify it. So who owns the heavens? And you know there are dimensions of heaven, but who owns all the heavens? God. Who owns all the earth? God. So Psalm 24 says the same thing. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness and the world and they who dwell in it. Look at the four dimensions in the scripture. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So he owns the earth. What is the earth? The earth is the geography. The earth is the physical planet. He owns it because he made it. He created it by his own wisdom and discretion. So he owns it. So in legal terms, in legal terminology, we would say if you own a piece of property, what title document will be given to you? It would be, it's, I don't know, here it's usually a C of O, a certificate of occupancy. So where is the certificate occupancy of the Lord domicile, with, of the earth domicile with him? It's his right. He owns it. And here it tells us it's not just the earth that he even owns. He owns the fullness. The fullness speaks of the things inside the earth. The diamonds of South Africa he owns. The gold, the tin, the solid minerals, the coal, the oil. He owns. They're his. He made them when no one was here. He was the first person who was here when he created, so he owns everything. The world, what's the difference between the earth and the world? So it talks about the world, and if you give me another version, maybe give the NLT version, it tells you those that dwell in it, the NLT version of that same. So the earth, the fullness, the world, and the people, yeah, like this, everything in it, the world. So what's the difference between the earth and the world? Sometimes they're interchangeable. But the world speaks of the structures that the people have put on the earth. Government. Politics. Business. Education. Entertainment. Sports. Science. Business. Financing. Everything that humans operate in on the earth is referred to as the world. So when Jesus says, go ye into all the world, he wasn't just saying go ye into all the earth, though that is implied, but it's beyond going into the world. So get a passport, but then beyond your passport, we also have access into various dimensions of the world. And I'll come back to this later. And the people he owns. So who owns the, the heavens? Oh, you guys are so quiet now. Why are you so quiet? GC, I think they need you to sing. They need you to sing. Who owns the who owns the heavens? That's better. Who owns the earth? All right, let's go to Psalm 115, verse 16. Psalm 115, verse 16. Let's read together. One, two, let's go. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. 
So who owns the heavens? Who owns the earth? Oh, I'm getting confused in this church now. Okay, let me start again. Who owns the heavens? Shout it out. Who owns the heavens? Who owns the earth? There's confusion again this evening. Mama, you have to solve this problem for us again. <laughs> so we see two scriptures apparently conflicting each other. So there's no problem with heaven. Okay, the contention now seems to be about the ownership of the earth. So let's get a lawyer again. Your Excellency, explain this one to us. We said originally from the first verse, can you all hear me? We said that the earth, the scroll, the documentation is with him. The certificate of occupancy is with him. But what's going on here? Oh, thank you, Your Excellency. Honorable Kill, always on point. What he's saying is, the ownership is God's. But he had another document. It's called the power of attorney. What is the power of attorney? The right to use that which he owns. But he owns it. So who owns the heaven? Who owns the earth? God. But who did he give the right to rule on the earth? Man. So that's clear. I'm doing a simple teaching today. When did he do this? After he created the heavens and the earth. If you look at Genesis 1.26. And God said, let us make man in our own image and in our domain, in our likeness. And so when God, when it was time to create the, the, the light, he said, let there be light. The trees, he said, let there be the trees. Let there be the birth. But when it came to man, man was a truly special creation. It required the, the Godhead in something called divine consultation before they began the divine construction. So let us make man in our own image. So man had the image of God. So you looked at a mirror, you saw God. That was how man was made. You wanted to touch God, you looked to man. So said, let them and our likeness, the same emotions, the same passion, the same holiness. Be holy for I am holy. The same emotions, the same feeling of compassion, anger towards sin. It says, and the reason I made them is to have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth. Look at that relationship between man and the earth. Strong. Now, ideally, there should have been a full stop after over all the earth. And then, they, they say, you know how the Bible is full of hints, and there's a hint, and by the way, over every craving thing that creeps upon the face of the earth. What are the creeping things? The scorpions and the serpents and the demonic powers. I'll come to that in a minute. So man was God's king on the earth. Man was God's regent on the earth. Adam and Eve had what I call a force field of glory around them. And God will come down and show them where the gold was. There was no lack in the garden. And God had a plan. God had a plan. Because he put Adam in a garden. And then told him, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, 
subdue, have dominion. Let me jump quickly to first. First John five nineteen. Just want to read scriptures to lead us step by step on this journey. The scripture said, "Okay, so who made the heavens? Who made the earth?" Who owns the world? Who owns the people? Now we who are here tonight, the Bible says we know we're of God. But something happened between that creation and today. Such that, First John says, right now, the whole world lies under the sway. Any other versions, the whole world lies under the sway of the evil one. Says the world around us is under control of the evil one. Which world? Education, politics, science, even religion. In fact, Jesus told us that the last day battle will not even be from other religions. He says they will come in my name. So there will be a Christianity that was not Christianity in the last days. Because it will be in the name. It will look like Christianity. It will not. And even the very elect will be deceived. So that the enemy was going to use religion to even deceive the elect. So he says the whole world, the evil one, controls the whole world. Him and his minions and demonic powers. How did this happen? From where we had a king, we had one made in the image and likeness of God. They said one day the animals were playing rough. Then they had God coming in the garden. And then they all started behaving. Then they looked. They said it's just Adam. What's wrong with him? Because Adam sounded like God. Adam looked like God. Adam had God's language. When Adam began to name the animals, Utterance, intelligence, wisdom, unction. So what happened? Where the wicked one is now in control. Where the king has no kingdom. Where sickness has come in. Cancer, prostrate issues. People are fed in their dreams. False religions. Trauma. Pain, evil, darkness, globally, evil governments, oppression. What happened? Why is the world, please just kiss me on my scripture, under the control of the wicked one? Because something happened in Revelation, I think Revelation 12 verse 7. This is what happened. And war broke out in heaven. Even before Adam came on the scene, there was a war in heaven. There were three archangels. There was Michael. He was in charge of warfare. The war at that time is another matter, but let's not talk about it. It's postgraduate. Then there was Gabriel, the messenger. And there was Lucifer, the archangel of music. He was in charge of the choir. The Bible said he had brass tapers of his pipes. He had instruments, bills. So when he lifted up his wings, there was music. It was the golden cherub. He brought all the angels before God. One day he said, ah, all this worship to God, I think I want to be like God. Why is he the only one taking worship? And there's a myth that some other angels, some other lesser cherubims told him, yes, Lucifer, it's you we want to worship, not God. 
And so war broke out. And Michael now gathered angels and fought with this dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. So there was a battle before we came on this scene. Oh. You see, Reverend Sam, you know, in, your, in our catechism, they teach us about the church triumphant and the church militant. Oh, Reverend, thank you so much. That the church triumphant is where? The one in heaven. So that there's militancy that's supposed to stick to the church on earth. The communion always had that revelation. When did we begin to lose the militancy? As I said, tradition crouches at the door, waiting to kill spirituality. So there was a battle in heaven. The dragon fought. But Michael was strong. And God was watching. Let me see what's going to happen. Next verse, please. But they did not prevail. Nor was any place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceived the whole world. He was cast to the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. How many angels? I'm sure you know. It's one third. John said, I saw. He took one third of the angels with him. And they descended to the earth. And these angels, these fallen angels, they don't want to possess human beings. So. In fact, Paul described them. Because on their way from heaven to the earth, they became principalities. They became powers. They became rulers of darkness. And they became spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Oh, by the way, where are demons in this list? Are, are demons principal? The demons that people cast out, I bind you, get out of her. Are they principalities? Are they powers? Are they rulers of darkness of this world? Are there spiritual wickedness in heavenly places? Those demons that were begging Jesus, please cast us into the pig. Were they principalities? Were they powers? Were they rulers of darkness of this world? Were they spiritual wickedness in heavenly places? The truth is, the origins of demons and the origins of that category, those categories are different, but that's another story. Angels don't want to possess human beings. They want to rule. They want to take over nations. They want to take over politics. They want to take over governments. They want to take over social media. Years ago, when Twitter started, I was posting some things. They blocked me at the time. And when we wrote, they said Twitter was not made for God. So the algorithm, once it sees God, I'm not sure, is that still ongoing now? It will delete and block. So we began to look for ways. It's like you don't own social media. You don't own Instagram. We own TikTok. We own MTV. We own satellite channels. And what do we publish? Sexuality. Immorality. These demonic powers have one intention. To destroy everything pure and holy. To turn husbands and wives against each other. To turn society around. To bring genocide to nations. To bring xenophobia in the world. To bring degradation to the area. To establish corruption. 
And then they use the demons and witches and wizards for incantation. So in the fall from heaven to the earth, there was a mutation of these demonic powers and they became principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness. And they began to roam around the earth. Where were they cast into? The earth. Was Adam there? Yes or no? Someone said yes. Was Adam there? No. All this war and the casting happened before Adam came. So why did God not just destroy Satan and Lucifer after that rebellion in heaven? God was like saying, let me take my time to deal with Satan and Lucifer. He's a created being. There's a word we use in local parlance. It will be infradig, I, to destroy him. I will get a created being to destroy this created being. I will make man in my own image and in my own likeness. And so when he made man, he gave him a mandate. First, he created an area with a gate. If you remember, when Adam and Eve had sinned and God drove them out, he then put an angel with flaming swords or two angels to guard the gates of the God. I know there are many revelations on the Garden of Eden. I don't, sometimes it's too deep for me. Let's just keep it simple as we read in the Bible. There was a garden somewhere and God placed Adam and Eve in the garden. What did he say to them? Have dominion over fish. That means great submarines. Over the birds of the air. Create private jets, create jets, create fighter jets. Create aeroplanes. Deal with, go beyond the birds. Over the cattle. And then he added, and over all the creeping things that were creeping outside. So God just planted a garden. He says God planted the garden and put the man he had created in this planted garden and said, care and tend. Then please give me where he says, and he told him, be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish. I'll give you the scripture. I, I want to use scripture today. And have Genesis chapter 1. So just move on from 27, 28. Genesis 1, 27, 28. Let's read it, please. Are you guys still here this, this evening? So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created a male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. He just blessed them. And he said to them, listen, I want you to be fruitful. I want you to multiply. I want you to fill the whole earth. Then I want you to, you, you can't subdue something that's already beautiful. It was only the garden that was beautiful. What was outside the garden? principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, hungry demons. They're outside. He said, subdue it. Have dominion. What God was telling Adam, expand and extend this garden. Just keep moving this garden. Keep moving this garden. And when you finish with the earth, I'm going to take you to Mars. When you finish with Mars, we're going to go to Pluto. I have other galaxies I want to show you. If fallen man can go to the moon, imagine what man that was fallen, that, that was created in God's image would have done on the earth. That 
word subdue is a militant word. I want to keep this message short. I'm going somewhere. Are you, are you still with me? And we know we are of God, but the whole world lies under the sway of the evil one. What happened? Satan came and deceived Adam and Eve. Cut a long story short. And all of a sudden, the glory departed. Problems came. Man was chased out of the garden. And the devil began to rule the world. As you know, when Jesus came, and Satan came and said, I know you want the world back. You don't have to die. Just worship me. I'll give it to you. Showed him all the kingdoms. Says, all this belongs to me. Who gave it to him? Adam. It was as though in the fall of man came a transference of the power of attorney to Satan. But who owns the heavens? Who owns the earth? Who did he give the right to rule the earth to? Who was God's king on the earth? Who was to have dominion on the earth? Who was to subdue on the earth? When we say man, that is, that's also man and woman. But then, what happened? Man gave it to Satan. And so, 1 John 5, 19 is where we are. That the world lies under the sway of the wicked one. But if you look at Revelation chapter 5, something happens. God was like looking from heaven. And as man began to multiply outside the garden, Satan took over everything. It's been a battle. It's been difficult. The wars, the pain, the frustration. So it wasn't only Adam and Eve that fell. Whatever they created fell. Governments fell. And so we see perversion in government. We see corruption in government. Education fell. They are teaching us that men came from monkeys. Entertainment fell. They're entertaining us with naked girls and naked men. Art fell. God is a creator. Now, if you're in the world of art, you'll see the fall. If you go to a university right now, James, did you know that the first lecture in some art schools is to paint a naked man who sits as a model? Marriage fell. It was one man, one wife. Other religions came. So what we see is the world under the sway of the evil one. And in Revelation chapter 5, verse 2, the angels were picking up the mind of God. I want the earth back. I want this power of attorney back. This is a usurper. Rebelled in heaven. Deceived Adam and Eve. And this world I created is in a bad shape. I want the world back. So this angel could pick up the mind of God. John said, I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who's worthy to open the scroll and to lose the seals? Who's worthy to take us back to this issue of the certificate of occupancy? 
Who can show that he has the legal right? That it doesn't belong to the devil. It belongs to me. And the angel was looking. They said they found no one in heaven. They searched the earth. They found no one on the earth. They looked under the earth. They said there's no one able to deal with this matter of the ownership of the earth. And the angel said a crime. Said I wept much because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look at the book. One of the elders said, why are you crying? He says, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the son, the root of David, he will do it for us. And to lose its seven seats. Why was there a problem? Again, this is a legal issue. Who owns heaven? Who owns the earth? Who did he give the right to rule the earth? Who did man give it to? But who owns the earth? Who gave it to Satan? Who can take it back from Satan? Only man. So Jesus said, I will become a man. I will become a man. You know, when Jesus came, the demons just said, eh, I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. What did he say to them? Shut up. I'm not here as God. I came as a man. They said, we know, we know who you are. We are worshiping you in heaven. We know you. You are God. You have no right to be here. A man gave us this earth. He said, I am the son of man. He said, I'm fully God, but I'm a man. I have the passions of a man. I get tired. I eat. I rest like a man. I have emotions like a man. They told the angel, stop, stop weeping. We're going to get this earth back. Let me cut this message short. Eventually, God played a trick on the devil. You know, he was the high priest, the devil. Was the high priest? God used Satan to sacrifice the lamb. The moment Jesus died on the cross, he said, It is finished. Those three days, it's a mystery. But to simplify it, he went to take back ownership. Hear where I'm going. As I begin to close this man, please don't miss this part. <clears throat> so the way that Adam sinned and the right to rule the earth was transferred to Satan. When Jesus died on the cross, the Bible said he spoiled principalities and powers. He made an open show of them triumphing on the cross. So the cross was the instrument to redeem the earth. So if you look at Revelation 5, it says, They sang a song, verse 9 saying, 
You were worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And now you've made us again kings and priests to our God. And we shall once again reign on the earth. But this is where the message ends and this is where it gets a bit complex. I want to close with this demonstration. Where is Jesus now? He died. He rose. He is seated. Hebrews tells us God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke to the prophets through his son by whom he created the world. He says after he has purged our sins he sat at the right hand of God. Can I have two chairs here please? Can I have two chairs please? No, give me better chairs. Give me better chairs please. Give me better chairs. Get, get us chairs. So where are you going to sit, man of God? Thank you. I, I need two of those chairs. Yes, you can use mine, please. Yes, thank you. No, facing us, thank you. In, in, the, in the middle, in the, in the middle. Okay, P put the bigger one. Yes, there. Yes, thank you. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. I, I need two people to demonstrate something for me. I need God the Father. Give me someone who looks wise, like, like Reverend Cassiana, you know. <laughs> sit, sit there on the bigger ones. Thank you. Give me someone to play Jesus Christ, please. Who's wearing white? I want someone wearing white, looking angelic. Give me someone looking young and angelic to play Jesus. You're, you're looking too rugged. I need someone young. <laughs> now let's do some casting. Okay, come in. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Are you understanding this message? We'll, we'll try and see how it connects us to the life of prayer. But John, give us that scripture. First John 5, 19. Any other version? So we, we know we're God's children here. We know that they it says we still know, and that's the, the challenge of Christianity. Let's be honest with ourselves. I was afraid to become a Christian for many reasons. One was, I was afraid that heaven would be boring. I was full of life and activity. I was full of action. I was an action man in my youth. I was everywhere. And then, when we used to go to church and attend Palm Sunday, the priest at the time told us this is what heaven looks like. So it stuck in my mind that we'll be waving palm fronts for the rest of eternity. So I said, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. <laughs> I don't want to go. <laughs> I prefer the nightclubs. <laughs> just every day, just shouting hallelujah for. And not just one day or two days a year. They said for eternity. And they use scripture. We'll be saying holy, holy. 
So I, I like to be honest with myself. So I would ask questions. Would hear messages. God has conquered Satan. Yeah, everybody shout, yeah. There was one program where they said, now we're going to fight. Everybody take your shoes off. Find a pen. Write on the sole of your shoes, Satan. Write principality. Write power. Now everybody wear your shoe. Now drummer, go. Everybody match and match him. Everybody match and match him. Everybody match him. So the whole church was just matching, matching, matching. Match. The demons gathered outside. They were laughing. <laughs> we'll get you when you come out here. You are busy now, our father. You liars in there. Our father is your, he's the father of liars. And you're a liar. And you're abusing him. Tonight, special punishment for you. Do I shout him, match him, match him, match him. Remember the church I told you? There's some witches who are flying. And then some men said, see witch flying, no. They're saying, I bind you. I bind you. The witches said, ah. We're not coming to your church. We're going to attack somewhere. Then you are binding us. Okay, detour everybody down to that church. <laughs> then when they grabbed the men, they said, do you people know how you sound in the spirit? That we're here and we bind you. We bind you. We bind who? Bind your mother? Slaps. Said, tonight we're going to give you cola nuts to eat in your dreams. We're going to be eating cake, cola nuts, and chicken in the night, every night. And we're going to be pressing you down. And during your period, we'll come for you. And you men, we're going to send soccer balls to you. So the problem I had was we preach power. At best, they will heal one person, heal two people. Then we still go home and we are sad. So I was saying this Christianity is not working for me. Oh. Jesus conquered the devil. We we'll all shout, yeah. Then we go home with sickness. Jesus gave us the victory, yeah. We'll be oppressed in the country. Why? Why? Are you people still with me? Shall I explain why to you? The work that Jesus Christ did, hear me carefully, is in two parts. The work he did was in two parts. After Lucifer messed up in heaven, dealt with Adam and Eve in the garden, God's plan is I don't want to have a mistake made again. My, uh, the, root, the, the root of David, the land of Judah, Jesus, will go and take back this power. And then Jesus will go to heaven and sit at the right hand of the Father because he has finished his part of the two-part work. He won the victory on the cross. He defeated Satan. He did two things, or there are two parts. Number one is the winning of the victory which he has done. There's nowhere in the Bible you are supposed to win a victory. Jesus won the victory. We are called to enforce the victory that Jesus won. Okay, let me act this out. Give me one more person. Give me one person. Give me, stand here. Do not scoop, just stand here. Yes, bring it. Give it to give it to one of the ministers here, please. Let them do the work. You don't know, don't do it. 
give it to them. This is their terror. We come in here, we submit to the government here. Stand up here, stand here. So this is a man. He has a head. He has a body. Let me get this across because this is the critical moment. God planned that I will create a new kind of man who won't lose out to the devil again. That this man I'm going to make is going to be a spiritual man. His head, the, even though his head will be Jesus Christ. And I'm going to call his body the church. In the spirit, this man, this man is the man to take the world, is the man to enforce the victory. Not the United Nations, not the FIDs, not the politicians. Is this man whose head is Jesus Christ and his body are my people? This is a man. Now hold this and cover his body for me. No, 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 just, yes, just, just lift it up. What do you see? So without a body, what would you call a head? A bodiless head. A bodiless head. Now, take that down and use the cushion to cover his face. Don't stand, stand, stand away. So what is this? A headless body. Take it off. What is this? A man with a head and a body. Let me close with, let me tie it up with Psalm 110. In Psalm 110, Please give him a mic. Give Reverend Kiss a microphone, please. In Psalm 110, David said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit down at my right hand till I make your enemies. Your footstool. Next verse, please. Next verse, please. So two lords were speaking. David said, there are two lords speaking. And the Lord said to my Lord, please sit down till I make your enemies your footstool. I'm going to send the rod of your strength out of Zion so that you can rule in the midst of a world under the sway of the evil one. So what is happening here is like Jesus is looking at the world. He has died. He has gone to heaven. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. But David said, I can hear the father telling him to sit down. So, Reverend Kiss, tell your son to sit down. Sit down. Sit down at my right now, hand. Look at it now. Can you tell someone sitting down to be seated? So what's going on here? 
Pastor, come on now. He can't tell you. Yeah, he's trying to. So tell him, sit down. Sit down. So Reverend Kess, you know, yeah, baby, let's, let's look at it again. Why is the son standing up? He's died for our sins. He's paid the price. He's poor principalities and powers. He's ascended to heaven. He said it is finished. up. And it's like, they don't understand what I'm trying to do. So it's like, the devil is still in control. He's still tormenting. Let me go back a second time. And the father said, Oh, 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 Kes, you have, Kes, Kesena, you, have, you have to be angry with the son for a change. Do you know, do you know why, Moses didn't, why Moses didn't enter the promised land? He struck the rock twice, signifying that Jesus died twice. That's what the son wants to go and do again. Oh, come on now, bro, bro, come on now, move for me. Can, Sit no, down. Someone no, understand what I'm trying to do here. Who understands what I'm trying to do here? Do it again. Sit down. Sit down. Pull it. No, this time pull it. Do it again. Sit, Sit down. down. Where are you going? Where are you going? You are the head. There's a body of Christ. Is the body of Christ not a body? The combination of you and them is the man that will rule the earth. Sit down. Like, where are you going? You've already died. You shed your blood. You paid the price. Sit down. The government, my government, shall be upon your shoulders. And you are just the head. The shoulders are on the body. The body's on the earth. Sit down. I will make your enemies your footstool. You put your legs on the footstool. You are the head, the body. Have the feet. Sit down. But my children are dying. The ones I died for, they are suffering. Demons are tormenting them. The nations are in an uproar. There's trouble everywhere. Religions are tormenting them. Sit down! Even if you do anything, cover this part again. If you do anything now, you will be what? A bodiless head. And they alone are a headless body. What I need them to do now is to get this bodiless head to connect to you where you are. See, we're going into prayer now. We're going into prayer now. Do it again. Sit Stay on it. Sit down. Sit down. At some point, the father has to get up to stop the son. Pull him back. Pull him back. Sit down. You, you can't die twice. I need you again. I bring you. Come on. In Jeremiah 49. In fact, I like five and six. I like five and six of them. Um, don't touch the glass. Just give me this the side. Yes, thank you. You know, I, I need a cleaner, please. Please sit down for a moment. Sit down for a moment. Let's let's try and round this message up. No, 
I'm in, I'm in Psalm 110. Psalm 110. Psalm 110. Let's go to some maybe five. Some five. I beg your pardon, verse five, verse five. Verse five of that Psalm 110. Let me close. It says the Lord, that's the that's the Father still speaking to the Son. The Lord is at your right hand. Okay, he's gonna execute kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the nations, he shall fill the places with dead bodies. He will execute the heads of countries. He's saying this is what would happen if we get it right. If you and the body connect and get it right, we're going to deal with heads of countries. We're going to take over nations. We will take over politics. And I'm going to end in a moment. So let's now go to Jeremiah 49 verses 1 and 2. Jeremiah 49 explains what's in the mind of God. At the time in Israel, they had divided land. And then God looked and said, the area I gave God, the tribe of God, what am I seeing? He was seeing these statues, these shrines with hands. If you watch Ten Commandments, hands stretched out and they were born in babies. Molech, Kimosh. Milcom. So God started asking a question. Jeremiah 49, verse 1, please, verse 1. So God wrote through the prophet. It says, Against the Ammonites, thus says the Lord, Has Israel no sons? Does Israel have no heir? Why is Milcom? Inheriting the land apportioned to God. Why are these Am Ammonites? Can I see the NLT version, some other version? Keep it in warfare, please. Keep it in warfare. No, no, no. Don't, don't, don't use piano keys. Don't use piano keys. Use, use the warfare tool. This message was given to the Ammonites. This is what the Lord says. Are there no sons? No one can inherit the land of God? Why no, no, you've overdone it now, Minister Daniel. Keep it a mix. I'm going into warfare. Don't just push me into warfare. But don't stay on piano keys. Just be a little bit more creative. Thank you. That's better. It says, why are you people who worship Molech living in its towns? Next verse, please. In the days to come, says the Lord, I will sound a battle cry against your city of Rabbah. It will become a desolate heap of ruins. The towns will be burned. Then Israel will take back the land you took from her. Let me, let me really, really close here. Please take this thing away from me. Take this. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Is there any politician here? Anybody? Anybody? Any politician here? Okay, anybody in IT here? You're a politician? You're in IT? Anyone who works on social media here? Any, any, anyone who works in education here? Educa any teachers here? Mommy, let's start with you. I love this. This is a demonstration moment. Let me take you there myself. Because I need, I need some music, I need some music, I need some, I need some dramatic music. What's happening in education now? They're teaching kids nonsense. And there are different levels of that nonsense. But mama needs to be anointed. 
Mama needs to be anointed to take back education for God. To start teaching kids the right things again. We need to set up schools that will teach as curriculum that God made man in his own image. We need to teach the children that sex outside of marriage is wrong. We need to teach them that God wants them to live holy. We need to bring them up in the fear and the nurture of God. But guess what? Education lies under the influence of the wicked one. Mommy is, mama is part of the body. Without Christ, she's a headless body. In prayer, we are sending. They that wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings. Our wings are taking us to the throne where the Father and the Son together will be so glad that there is a woman who wants to take back education. <laughs> The father had told the son, sit down, the body is there. So we are coming to the throne, Mama kneel down. Father, anoint her. He labels the son, anoint her. She must be the face of education. She must change the children. She must fight the devil. As Mama begins to pray. Every day, Mama pray, pray. Let the level to God. He can't give me volume. He let go to God. Give me volume, please. He let go to God. Give us volume here, I beg you. That's what happened. The father is happy. The son is made of blood. I say, there's a woman here. There's a woman here. She understands. She understands. Who can stand against this woman in that strength? Mama, come bring the children back. Take those kids back for us. Now just walk around and come back. Just go and teach. Okay, you guys, I need a warfare sound now because this is now warfare. Mama, just mama, just help me walk around. It's like, mama, when you're walking around, help me set up some schools. Help me train some teachers. Help me find some children, some poor kids. Teach them the way of God. Mama, go. Mama, go. Mama, go. Social media. Social media. Now, bro. Social media is trouble, though. The prayer you will pray here will be long. We're not just praying for wife and children for you. Are you married? Are you married? Uh, you have children? One prayer you will pray for your wife and your children. But this one is to go and take back technology. Who owns the world? Who owns heaven? Who owns the earth? Who owns the world? Who, who did the devil give it to? Who did the devil give it to? Who has taken it back? Who has he given it to? You are the body. Can you connect with your head in the place of prayer, in the place of holiness? Let's go. Kneel down before them. You guys, social media is tough. Social media is tough. So anoint him. Say so, Brakandi, other Brakanda, they are. Let's go and take off social media. Listen, don't be afraid to post God. 
Watch against being deceived by the enemy. Get men, get women. Let's just begin to send our messages. Go and take over TikTok. Take over YouTube. Go, 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 run. Mama, come back. Go, go, go to the world, go to the world. For God so loved the church. No! For God so loved the world. He gave the church. For Jesus, sorry, for God so loved the world, he gave his son. And his son so loved the same world. He connected to the church, his body. That wherever you see church, he's not singing, singing and dancing. Ah, no, 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 no. The upper room was where the anointing came. Where did they meet all those men? It says people gathered. Dwellers in Mesopotamia, and Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Phrygia, Asia. The world was waiting for the church. The church was born in the context of a global world. When they came down, they saw a church with power. Where is the man who's a politician? It's too much for me. Where's the politician? Keep, keep it low, keep it quiet. Keep it quiet, keep it. It's like we're in war. Where's the politician? Where is this man from? Where, who, who is he? Where, are you local government chairman? What are you? No, I need someone in the thick of that demonic thing. I need someone inside that synagogue of Satan. We're coming to you. Where are you? What do you do? <sighs> Honorable. Honorable. What they are doing there? Hey. We have to spend like, we will all go, you will still be there. We have to design program for this man. Go on, Aru. No, 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 keep it quiet. Keep it quiet. I, I don't want, I, I don't really need the... Yes, the, the, the base now. Just give me something. Just give me with the and later you can pick up. In fact, this one, we have to go carry about 100 people to follow him there. The reason is that political throne is what those people wanted. They want to rule. Remember, Satan said that we rule in heaven. And how does he rule on earth? Lord, Lord, we have to help this man. He's in the midst of corruption. He's in the midst of depravity. He's in the midst of criminality. He needs power. He needs boldness. He needs courage. He needs a voice. He needs wisdom. He needs strategic initiatives. Please touch him more. Touch him more. Touch him more. We need to change the National Assembly. We need to change the Houses of Assembly. We, we, need more, we need him to become a governor. We need him to become the president. We need them to take over all the local governments. That's the only way we can bring righteousness. That's the only way we can bring morality and good government. All around is under development. We need wise men who are connected to Christ the head. And they will go and take the world, honorable, go back to the National Assembly and shine. Go back there and do something for God. Your turn, go. Go, go, go. Don't stop now. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Help him. Go, 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 go. All right, that's him. Push him away to go and make a change. Go, 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 go. Man of God, go, go. You want to go twice. 
Touch them, anoint them, empower them, enable them. It's in prayer. Who wants to go? Who wants to go? Who's in education? Mama is in education. Where else have we missed out? Huh? Music. Do you see? Do you see? Go and teach them that all this thing they are doing, no. Hey, bro, 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 bro. Hey, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. No. no hold on, hold on. Do you see? You're there for a while. Bros, out. Just stay your turn. Even the devil loves gospel music now. We can't tell the difference between what is holy and what is unholy. Sometimes I look at pictures of churches dancing, praising. If I turn down the music, it's like how I used to do nightclub. Oh. I look at the dressing, like how I used to do nightclub. Then I would put the music on. Me, I like rhythm, I like groove. But it's like there's no difference. When I get my tail out to so close for me, I'll say, I don't want my body to be seen. Give me baggy clothes. They didn't worship one day. Cleavage. Cleavage. What's going on? What kind of distraction worship is this now? GUC, help us now. Reverend, go. 